It's big, it's easy to see, it's pretty much unsinkable, and fish go crazy after it. I can't think of very many downsides to using a chubby Chernobyl. It's one of my go-tos when I'm fishing a dry dropper rig. Tie some up, you're not gonna regret it. To tie this fly, you'll need a dry fly or a terrestrial hook. Today I'm tying this in the size I fish the most often, size 10, but I also like to have a couple of size 12 and size eight in my box at all times. Some brown thread, in either 72 or 136 denier, some pearl crystal flash, some super fine dubbing and tan, some foam. You can play around with this in both thickness and color. Today I'm using two millimeter foam in flesh. You'll need some uncarded white poly yarn, and some rubber legs in your color of choice. Today I'm using black and brown. All right, gather up your materials and let's get tying. All right, first let's get our hook secure in the vise. We'll attach our thread to the hook by wrapping forward a few times then back over itself. Grab your scissors and trim the tag end. Now we'll dress the hook with a quick thread base. And attach our crystal flash tail. Crystal flash can be a little unruly at times. For this pattern, we're gonna take two strands, fold them in half, then fold them in half again. It's fine if they start to twist around each other. And if you're having any troubles, just take your fingers and slide them down the strands until they calm down a bit. With our crystal flash prepped, we'll hold it at a 45 degree angle and take a couple loose wraps over the top. Then we'll make sure it's sitting directly on top of the hook and secure it in place. Next, we'll add a little bit of bulk to our fly by wrapping over the flash right up to just behind the hook eye. And we'll trim the front of the flash while we're at it. And now that we have a solid base, we'll trim off the tail. Let's grab our dubbing and create a four to five inch dubbing noodle. Now we'll wrap all the way back to our tail. Then back up to the hook point. Time to prep our foam. Grab your foam of choice and use your scissors to create a body of your desired length and width. Keep in mind that it's usually best to err on the side of long as you can trim it off at the end of tying. And the wider and thicker your foam, the harder it's gonna to be to attach. Now we're gonna take our foam and line up the back edge of it with the end of our tail. Then with one big wrap, we'll attach our foam, but you'll notice it starts to slide or rotate around the hook right off the bat. To help combat this, we're gonna take another wrap back further on the foam and then a series of wraps in between. It's still gonna rotate and slide a bit until we form another attachment point later on. Now let's get our first wing on there by attaching about three inches of poly yarn right in the middle of your yarn piece. To make sure the wings angle backwards, we're going to take the front half, make a small bulb, then make one loose wrap over the top. Softly pull back on the yarn until only a little bit is showing. Now make one or two tight wraps. Next we'll add our rubber legs. Grab your color of choice and attach one strand with one loose wrap. Make any needed adjustments 
Then wrap the rest of the strand up and around. And attach the other side with one loose wrap. Then secure both sides with one or two more tight wraps. Now we're gonna fill in our gap with some dubbing. Wrap over the foam, yarn, and legs once or twice, then lift up the foam and work your way back up to just behind the hook eye. Now we're gonna repeat the same exact process again. Attach our foam, add some poly yarn, angle it back, attach our rubber legs, wrap them around, and secure them in place. Now we'll create a very small dubbing noodle, maybe half an inch or just enough for one or two wraps. Then we'll fill in the gap and wrap back under the foam right behind our hook eye. Now grab your whip finisher and use your left hand to hold back all the materials and do a five or six turn whip finish. Now we'll trim the thread and it's time to clean up our fly a bit. First, we'll cut our front rubber leg loop and get those out of the way. Now we'll trim our head and I personally like to trim off the corners as well. And let's not forget our poly wings. The front I'll trim to about the halfway point of the back wings. And don't forget our back rubber leg loop. And the back to just longer than the back of the fly. Now we'll trim off our rubber legs to the desired length. Some anglers like them longer, some shorter. I usually go somewhere in the middle. And a good way to adjust them up and down is to grab both sides and shimmy them back and forth. Once you've got all the legs where you want them, you're ready to catch some fish. If you found this tutorial helpful and easy to follow along, be sure to check out all of our other tutorials here. And if you don't want to miss out on all of our weekly fly fishing and tying tips, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and live real life.